Hi, so I was having a look at um, Goethe Looks, a Flynn replication, and I quite like the look of it. Um, what he does is he uses um, the internals from a simple motor. They're uh, fan motors from a bathroom fan or uh, a microwave oven. And there's a two or three of these motors in an oven, and if you can get hold of one scrap, then you're probably going to pay about five quid or so, and you can saw it up like he does. Uh, I didn't fancy doing that, so I had a look around in my bits box, and I came up with this. It's a one-to-one -one isolation transformer. I think it's from, uh, yeah, it's probably from a TV, uh, although it might be from an old microwave oven as well. Anyway, it's a um, handy little thing. Obviously, you can see it's got two identical coils either side of a U-shaped piece of uh, laminate soft iron. So I desoldered it from the board. Um, peeled off the yellow tape that was around here, cleaned it up a little bit and I put some um, super glue on the ends of it just in case when I do get this thing into two pieces uh, it decides to fall apart, apart, the super glue will do something to hold those laminations together. Now I took a fine toothed hacksaw uh, and a brand new blade and started going down this carefully. I think you can see, there you go, there's the cut that I've been making there and if I hold it a little bit closer you can see there's been no disturbance of laminations they're actually staying in place uh, I'm cutting this quite carefully but um, I'm not cutting it like that if I held it in the vise and cut it like that on the edge of these laminations is quite a lot of force and it will bend the lamination out what I'm doing is cutting it like that sorry, like that so it's going alongside the lamination. What that means is the force of the blade as it pushes through the cut is pushing the lamination out that way instead of out that way. Now, if it pushed out that way, it'd come apart rather easily. It seems to be holding up quite nicely, doing it slowly this way. But like I say, fine tooth and brand new blade and take it slowly and you should be able to get these laminations out. So uh, here is one half of the transformer sawed in half. It seems that the thing to do with this is being incredibly gentle. Now it was quite tightly bound here when I sawed it through I'd managed to score this layer, the first layer of wire, so uh, I unsoldered it from its pen, uh, peg, took off the first layer and re-soldered it. Um, seems to be fine really and then re-taped it obviously with insulation tape. I did the same to this one even though it wasn't scored to balance them up and lo and behold the resistance of them is uh, about 2.4 uh, ohms each and they seem to be about 1.7 millihenries on the inductance. So here's the completed device. So you can see those are the two halves of the transformer that are used. It turns out the cross-sectional area of these pieces was one centimeter by two centimeter. Now the only magnets I've got are A stack of these things which are uh, one centimeter in diameter by two millimeter thick so I used two of them side by side with 12 of them now what happens there is they actually push apart and form like a bow so I've wrapped them with this red tape to hold them together in a straight magnet so we've got 24 in that side 12 and 12 and 24 in that side with the north face facing this way and the same here the north face facing this way what that does is forces the magnetic flux out of the ends here. If you put them uh, north, south, north, south, then the flux path will run completely contained in here and you'll get nothing out of here. So if you do them north, north, south, south, then you get the path coming out. It's a steel rule and you've got, there you go, your force of attraction happening there. Okay, so that's a completed device. What we're going to do now is wire it up and run some tests on it. 